Hey, what's up everyone? Back here with another episode where I'm gonna dive deep into another market. Um, today I'm actually gonna select a market. This one's been pretty popular with a lot of people messaging me. Um, I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and uh, a lot of people have been asking about Vancouver, British Columbia. So I'm gonna dive deep into that and see if Vancouver still makes sense to have Airbnbs or short-term rentals, um, what the do's and don'ts are in that area, and uh, what areas make the set make the most sense and most profit um, and let's just dive into it and, and let's see what we get so um, I have a couple things already pulled up but I'm just gonna recap what tools I'm gonna be using uh, once again I'm gonna be using air DNA for our for our market and data analysis and I'm also gonna be using realtor to find out uh, any available listings for rent and then I'm also going to be using Vancouver's website, uh, the city of Vancouver's website to figure out, you know, short term rental regulations and their rules for it. And I just have a map pulled up as well. Uh, next is the right data cheat sheet. So this is the filters uh, that we're going to go through uh, to make sure that we're looking for a full time host. Uh, the reason why we're looking for full time hosts is because we want to have a full understanding of a year's worth of information versus just like two months worth of information. And the reason why is because if we have a full year's worth of information from other hosts in the area, um, we can comfortably kind of project or predict how a listing that's similar to that would operate or perform in that area. Because if someone has been only operating for like two months, let's say, <clears throat> Okay, so these are the filters that we're gonna be using um, on air. Here, let me maximize this a bit. So once again, we are gonna be looking for a full-time host to get uh, to understand the ebbs and flows. If someone's only been listed for about two months, that doesn't give us enough data to comfortably say, hey, I can use this data to go into this market, rent a property, buy a property, so then I can use it as a short-term rental. Versus somebody who has been on the platform for a few years, that data is more accurate, more predictable, um, and I would be more comfortable using that data before making uh, a decision to either rent or purchase in that market. So anyways, uh, let's go go through the sheet. I'm gonna go through the sheet every single time I'm doing one of these videos just because repetition is um, the mother of all skill, at least that's what the, the saying goes. But the more that uh, we do the basic stuff and understand the basics and the better that we get at it, the easier it'll be to spot opportunities. I don't know why, but <clears throat> I feel like I have like phlegm in my throat. Anyways, on air DNA, we're gonna be looking for total available listings have to be 250 active in that area. Days available, which is what I was just talking about, 250 days available. The star rating, minimum 4.6 stars on that review or are on that listing. Number of reviews, minimum 16. I actually, I should change this. It should be 12, at least one a month. That's the kind of pace that we're looking for. No VRB only listings. I'm also gonna change this too because in the last episode that I did for Clee Elam, Washington, it actually seems like people prefer to use VRBO for bookings. And if I excluded that VRBO only data, then I wouldn't have enough data to work off of. Um, and we were able to do some checks and balances to make sure that that data was correct as well, or fairly accurate. Next is exact bedroom comparables and then filtering out things by revenue and double checking it, same thing for the occupancy. And on Airbnb, we're just cross-checking everything that we just talked about. So looking for consistent reviews, checking the calendar for natural bookings to see if it's not like a fake listing or a part-time host. Um, someone that kind of only opens the calendar for just the peak season um, and then closes it off for the winter time or vice versa. They actually might close it off for the peak season so they can travel um, and then just only have it for the winter time to cover expenses. That might be the case. And then also just checking for um, checking for location as well. Like we want to be close to or we want to have the comparables close to the subject area or properties that we're looking at. Because if we're like more than two miles or three kilometers out, then you're pretty much like in a completely different area, to be honest. So we wanna get as close as we can. 
And then next is the optimization cheat sheet. So this is just going through the actual listing itself and how we can either match what the current operators are doing or outperform them. And we just do it by checking a couple of things, listing title, photos, photos, and photos. Photos are such a big deal. I don't understand why people don't invest like the 500 to even $2,500 or maybe even $10,000 if you have like a super luxury property to get professional photos. Professional photos or photos in general are your first impression for when a guest looks at a listing or, or looks for their travel accommodations. And why would you want to have a bad first impression? Like you only have a couple seconds to capture someone's attention. So make those couple seconds count. And you can do that with professional photos and all the other things that I talk about here. Um, what else? We also got to check for super host status, the calendar itself, if they're using like a static or dynamic pricing, the description and a few other things we can check off with Airbnb. So this is the type of information we're going to be using, uh, to filter out for full-time hosts. That's what we're looking for. I'm just going to drag this off to the side and now let's go into air DNA and let's get started. So. Uh, I cleared out everything, so there's no filters out right now. We're going to start from fresh, and I want to start with Vancouver, British Columbia. So let's see here. In Vancouver, there are 27 submarkets, 9,000 short-term rental listings, according to AirDNA, and Right now there's 3,741 active listings. So this is the number that we're gonna look at to find, here, let me pull it back up again, uh, to find this. Total available listings, 250 active. That's what we're looking for here. I'm gonna kind of close this and make this a little smaller. I'm gonna close that out, close that out. Nope, not that one, my bad. Oh, this one can go on the side. Sorry, this one. So I'm going to use this here. So this is the type of stuff we're looking for. So 250 active listings. And right now we could see that there's 3,741. So that means that there's enough of a sample size for me to grab data off of. Because if this is less than 250, I'm not saying that you can't do it in that certain area. I'm just saying that there's not enough data to actually make a more informed decision. And the reason why is because with a smaller sample size, it's just harder to gauge averages, right? Um, one of the big things in the world is the law of large numbers. So the more numbers that you have and the bigger sample size that you have, the more accurate the averages would be, right? So anyways, that's why we look, that's why I look at that. So 250 active and then next is days available. So 250 days available and how I'm going to do that is actually, I believe it's under performance. So days available, there's a filter for it. So I'm just going to uncheck these two because we want to be in around 250. And these are the only two check boxes that match that. So 181 to 270, 271 to 365. Next is star rating. We want to be minimum 4.6. Review count, like I said, we want to be at least one a month. That's the type of pace a full-time host uh, with the right right um, messages and stuff and with the right hosting that they are with the right experiences that they're giving to the guests should be getting. They should be getting at least one, possibly two uh, reviews a month. So I'm just going to uncheck this. And the reason why I'm unchecking that is because if they have less reviews in like a six month to a one year time frame, <clears throat> then they're not good hosts for us to kind of compare. I mean, we, we could also argue that if they're not performing well, that could be an advantage for us. But for now, I'm just gonna not check it off. And then now we can actually dive into the different sub markets. So see how those filters, we went from 9,000 listings to 2,100 listings. That means that tells me immediately that there's a lot of part-time hosts there. There's a lot of new listings there. Sorry, I was coughing like crazy there. Um, anyways, so that tells me once again, 
uh, that tells me that the data that air DNA has here is not accurate with the filters that I just put on. And that's why we use it. That's why I use these filters because if I was, if I was coming in and I didn't know that these filters existed or things to look for, then uh, I'm going to look at the camera. Then that would mean that my research is completely skewed. So if I go in expecting this type of revenue or this type of occupancy or how my short-term rental is going to perform off of that data, then I'm going to be surprised when it doesn't operate like that. But I know what to look for. So I'm not surprised because these filters help weed out all the bad stuff or the inaccurate stuff, I should say, and keeps all the more accurate stuff. And even from there, we still have to filter out more or I have to filter out more. So imagine someone who's just trying to get into the game because they heard that their neighbor or their friend is making a lot of money with Airbnb. Maybe their friend or neighbor it got lucky or maybe they're lying. So these are the types of things that I need to look at to make sure that I'm making a sophisticated investment or a sophisticated guess, essentially, right? Like everything that we're doing is just a guess until we get to the other side. And even when we're on the other side, we still have to try to operate it and work on it to make sure that it's still successful. But that's, I'm just going on a tangent there. But anyways, we're just looking for right data. We could see that we went from 9,000 to 2,100 listings just from a couple filters. So now we can dive a little bit deeper. Um, and let's see, we're going to go into the submarkets and I am going to filter out by revenue. The reason why I'm going to filter out by revenue is because I want to see which areas make the most money, because obviously if these areas are making more money, that gives me more room for margin. Um, and so I just want more money essentially, right? So why operate in areas that have less revenue? There, there is an argument for that. It could be potentially like there could be a sweet spot. For example, I don't know these places. Uh, let's say Riley Park. Let's say Riley Park. The rents and uh, the cost of living down there, utilities and stuff, is less expensive than downtown Vancouver. Then there could be an argument there saying, "Hey, you know what? My rent over here is like a thousand dollars a month," and the research could show that the amount of money that uh, we can make as a short-term rental or that I can make as a short-term rental is significantly bigger than if I were to rent in downtown Vancouver, where the rent could be $3,000 a month for a similar type of property, right? Um, just because the expenses are higher in downtown Vancouver versus Riley Park, there could be that argument there. But for this example, I'm just going to stick with the higher revenue stuff and then work backwards from there. Now, I want to talk about the 2x rule. I talk about this a lot because it's a quick way to gauge to see if the air is even viable before going into like my spreadsheet and putting it in the calculator and doing all that work because that takes hours, right? And actually here is, and this is the spreadsheet. So this spreadsheet, all the information that's inputted into here, all of this gets, spits, gets put together and spits out a grade. And what this grade is, it tells me how investable is this for my goals? Um, you know, a single, this is a baseball reference and I, I use this because it's a little bit easier to understand, but a single base hit for my calculator is anywhere between one to $2,000 worth of potential profit on a, on this, on an investment. Um, two to 3000 is a double base hit three to 4,000 is a triple base hit and 4,000 plus a month in potential profit is a complete home run. And now you can think about your goals. And if you're, if you tell me, Hey, Terry, you know what? I just want to make an extra $2,000 a month because, you know, bills are starting to add up, or I want to start putting some money away for a rainy day fund, or I want to eventually quit my job. And this will, you know, be a step forward. Then all you need is a double base hit or two singles to get to that point right? Versus some other people, they want to make $50,000 a month. Well, it's going to take time and maybe a couple home runs are in there in that portfolio, but a bunch of triples or doubles will definitely help get to that $50,000 a month mark. So anyways, this automatically 
calculates what grade it's going to give that property in that market. And this is super and this is super important because we could take a look at analysis all day every day and sometimes we can get paralyzed by it too. It's called analysis paralysis and you just have such an overwhelm of information. This this kind of puts all the information into a digestible format where it can actually translate into real life because if we go through this exercise and it's a triple base hit and it's making anywhere between three to four thousand dollars a month that would give me the confidence to say hey i can pull the trigger on this because the numbers make sense now instead of just saying oh yeah i did all this all this does it kind of make sense this actually translates into hey you know what it's time to take some action on it uh, which is i find like a step that most people don't take because they like to you know dive deep into the numbers understand things which is great uh, but eventually there's going to be a time where action needs to be taken and this helps with that so let's go back to our air dna and i'm also going to open up this as well um so i want to talk about the 2x rule so the 2x rule is a quick way to figure out whether or not diving into this market is worth it before going into that spreadsheet which i said could take hours and the 2x rule pretty much states that the revenue right here uh, you know what i'm going to open up downtown vancouver i know it's going to be expensive for rents down here and uh regulations are going to be strict but this is for the example so annual revenue across there's 800 str listings that meet the filters that i just put in across these listings the annual revenue is roughly fifty eight thousand dollars and now this is in us dollars so i should actually see if i can change it here Okay, so it's 79,000. I'm just gonna pull up a calculator. And the 2x rule simply states that the revenue has to be 2x the annual rent. So to work backwards from that, $79,800, divide that by two, that's how much the annual rent should be. Now we divide that by 12, that's how much our monthly rent should be, $3,325 on average. And this number allows us to have $3,325 in gross profits. And that's enough to ensure that if we're doing this work and going to this market at this price point, um, it would make sense for us to pursue. Now, before going any further into diving into the numbers for revenue, occupancy and all that fun stuff. I'm just going to take a look at realtor real quick. I'm going to open this vault and I'm going to see what the average rents are, um, for $3,325 in downtown Vancouver. And I believe that there's a map. Let me just open up here. DNA just to see what they consider downtown Vancouver. So we can see here, this area is pretty populated with short-term rentals and over here as well. So we want to be close to these areas when we're looking for rental listings. So I am going to look up downtown, close that out. Please, I don't want to give you my location. Okay, downtown, stop asking. Why is it asking so much? Downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. That's where we're gonna go. And it looks like the map here is pretty similar, I would say. Yeah, let's focus in this area because it seems like there's more densely populated. I think there might be a bunch of condos here. This is what well, close to Chinatown it says. So there's Chinatown. So let's stay around here. 
And what I'm going to do is look for rent and filter out. Uh, what am I filtering out here? Max rent. Three, three. Let's just put third 300. Search. I don't know why that didn't uh, didn't change there. Maybe I have to select it. Let's put 3,500. Search. Okay. Now it changed. So it looks like, where's Chinatown? That's going to be my reference point. Okay. So Chinatown and this general vicinity, that's where it seems like on air DNA, that's where most of, or a lot of listings are. I shouldn't say most, but a lot of listings are. So yeah, there's a lot of information to populate. So <laughs> this, when I zoom in, the map takes a while to load up. But I am going to focus around here. So it doesn't seem like that many listings available for rent. Let's see what's available. So we have a two bed, two bath, a studio, one bed, one bath, one bed, one bath, one bed, one bath. So for a two bed, two bath, I mean, an extra $450 versus a one bed, one bath. I think that might be worth it. Um, another rule with short term rentals is more beds, more heads equals more money. Simple rule. The more people that you can sleep, the more you can charge and the more money you can make. Let's see here. There's a two bed, one bed, one bed, one bed, two bed. So it seems like it's possible with the two X rule to be able to find something for rent. Doesn't, there's not a lot of options here uh, for that price point. I'm sure if I increase the max rent to $4,000, there'll be a lot more options. But at that same time, if, if I do that, then our profit gets compressed. So that's always an option. But right now I just want to stick strictly with the two X rule and see what's possible. I am going to go with this one for our subject property. Looks like a nice building. It looks really modern, like super, super modern. Maybe it's brand new. Who knows? That's a nice view. I think that's the main stadium in downtown Vancouver. Oh, they have baseboard heat here. That's interesting. Maybe that's a sunroom or something. I'm just kind of going through these photos just to see, you know, what type of layout it is, um, what type of furniture, uh, not furniture, what type of appliances they have, like in-suite laundries is always a good plus, especially for uh, midterm rentals if people are going to be staying there. They have carpet here. Which in the bedroom is not a big deal. Um, if you have carpet like throughout the entire house, though, I'd be kind of wary about that. Uh, good closet space. That's a funky tiled shower. Yeah, it seems that's kind of a smaller bedroom, but still doable. And then you have the floor plan here, which we could take a look at. So this one has an ensuite, so that's probably the primary. That's the second bedroom. Okay. All right. It looks fairly nice. Just reading here. So it's near the SkyTrain, Costco, BC Place, Rogers Arena. I'm just kind of putting this in my mental right now just to see if that's something that pops up when looking at reviews to see if people want to be close to these places. <coughs> Enjoy great restaurants in Yelltown and Gastown. Walking distance to Seawall and Science World. There's, there's a swimming pool, a sauna, steam room, fitness room, large party room, and one parking. I know in most downtown metropolises, Vancouver, Toronto, um, LA, New York, really like core downtown places, Parking can be a make or break. So it's good to know that there's one parking stall included and tenants to pay utilities. Okay, this was just listed to like within the last 24 hours. So this might go fast um, because it seems like this is the only two bed, two bath under 3,500 a month. 
They got dishwasher, refrigerator, stove, laundry in suite, 840 square feet. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to leave that open. But what I do want to know is a map directions. Actually, I can just zoom in from this map. So it's on West Georgia Street, which is over here. So I want to go to AirDNA, and I'm going to filter out some more things, make this a little bit easier. Uh, so I'm going to look for comparables. So we're looking for an apartment, an entire place, not a private room or shared. Exactly two bed. Bathroom count doesn't really matter. And accommodations doesn't really matter. But bedroom count doesn't matter because I want to take a look at apples to apples comparison. So now we went from, I think it was like 600 or 800 listings down to 246, that kind of match. And I am going to zoom in into this area, West Georgia. Uh, where was it? West Georgia. Nope, it was this one. 3450, yep. So West Georgia and Expo Boulevard. Oh, there's that stadium. Okay. Let's get move myself. So West Georgia and Expo. All right. One thing that concerns me right now is I could see that there's no air DNA listings here. Like none of these circles are in this building. So this building may not allow short-term rentals. That's one of the things that I have to consider um, when looking at places because, or when looking at condos and apartments, because it's really up to the board uh, for them to decide if they'll allow short-term rentals, because obviously that's going to affect the experience of the long-term people staying there uh owners renters and the sort so not all condo buildings will allow it so this might not even be viable you know what i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop right there and what i'm gonna do instead since that strategy is not going to work, I'm actually going to take a look at the short-term rental listings that are uh, available right now. So I'm going to look at um, properties that are making the most on AirDNA and then work back for, backwards from there. Because what it tells me, I apologize if you hear the holes in my mouth. I'm just trying to get some phlegm out of my throat. Um, anyways, if I do it, this way, then that can give me an idea of the available buildings that allow for short-term rentals and also which are the top performers and to see if I can model them or kind of work with how they're working um, and use them as inspiration essentially. So first thing I'm going to do is just filter this out by revenue because it's going to go from uh, descending order. So the most revenue, so this person, they're on Airbnb only, which is a great thing because for some reason I find that AirDNA primarily likes to get more accurate information from Airbnb versus VRBO. Um, but with my last video, it showed me that I was wrong. So anyways, um, this person, this is insane amount of revenue, by the way, like right out the gate, they've been available for 358 days. Their revenue is $186,000 on 76% occupancy. A few things that tell me from my experience, they are probably in a really high end luxury building and the rents are probably really, really high. Um, and it may be really tough to get in this specific building, but here's one. Let's see where they're located and open it up. downtown Vancouver where exactly so whatever this street is 
So Pacific Street and Granville. Let's take a look. I'm actually going to remove this filter or else uh, we may not be able to see. And search. Okay, now let me zoom out. Uh, here, so there was Seymour. We're looking for Pacific and Granville. There's Granville. Now I gotta look for Pacific. Oh, here it is. All right, so we're like right there. Anybody from Vancouver, you could tell me this is a good area or not, but anyways, air DNA shows that it seems like to be a good area. And we're also, oh, you know what? We're looking for two bed plus. So I should put that in, help filter out. So we won't be able to get in that exact building, but this building, this building, holy crap, 10 grand a month, <laughs> uh, 14 grand a month. Yep, 4,500 a month, 4,600 a month, okay. Um, well, we're close. Oh, you know what? I want to take a moment here because this pulled up. So you can see that this person has done $548 with 100% occupancy. If I open it up, they've only been available for three days. Um, obviously, the numbers don't are not like huge, uh, but these this is the type of data that you would see if we didn't have those filters. That's why it's important to have these filters. Let's go back. All right, we have 186 there. That seems like a good reference point. We have 116 here. They meet our metrics, which is good. It's just the rent is really, really high up here. I'm gonna close out of this one because we can't rent there anyways. Um, let's see if there's any in this building because we can, There are is there is a rental available here. So let's see if Pacific and Richards. It doesn't seem like we can rent in that building or there would at least be a few more rentals in there. That one's way too expensive. Let's try this one. Around here, nothing, no data. Okay. So it seems like this isn't the area to be in. Let's go back. My hair is wild today. Um, let's see, let's open up a couple of these. And let's see where they're located. What I'm trying to look for is Top performers, obviously, for revenue. That's what we're looking for here. Okay, so we have one, two, three. I don't know why that's not loading. Three, I think it was this one. Three, let's see if it loads this time. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight listings. So pretty much the eight top performers in downtown Vancouver. I'm just gonna take a look to see where they're located and see if we can find, or see if I can find something that uh, matches that's for rent on the MLS. So first one is, let's see here. So I'm gonna use this kind of like as a reference um, so Seymour and in between Smith and Nelson, Let's see the next one is over here, beach and Hornsby. This one's also beach and Hornsby. Are these the same ones? This is the same listing. Weird. All right. I'm going to close that one. Uh, this one is beach. A little bit further up. 
beach and in between Pacific. So it's close to the one that I just looked at. Take a look at this one. I just want to get a general area so I could kind of take a look all in one shot. What the heck? Where are we here? Oh, we're on the other side of Vancouver. Okay, I'm going to close out of that. And this is just how the process goes. Um, you know, I started with the two X rule and I started in that general vicinity uh, on the map first because it seemed like that's where everything was. And uh, now we're over here uh, because I couldn't find any rental listings available there. I possibly could it, like if, okay, hold on. Actually, you know what, now that I'm saying it, I possibly could if I was looking for, let me do exactly two bed with no uh, maximum rent. So let's see here, close to Chinatown. Let's zoom in. Uh, nope, not that much for rent. And also, it depends if the building allows it. Sorry, that was another thing. And it didn't seem like there were other listings in that area. Or where this listing was. No, sorry, this one. There were no other Airbnb listings in that building. At least what showed an AirDNA. So that kind of gives me an indication that there's going to be uh, not a lot of availability uh, for short-term rentals in that building, if any. So let's go back to these. This one is kind of over there. Nope, because we were just looking at that and there's no rental availability over there. And this one, okay. This one is close to also Nelson and Smith. Is that, yeah, these are the same listing. All right, I don't know why they're popping up like that, but Okay, let's start with this one between Smith and Nelson, and I believe that's Seymour. So here's Nelson. I'm guessing that's Smith. There's Seymour. And I'm going to pull this over. So it, it looks like it's in this building. Let's see if I could... So nothing for rent in this building. Could try that one. Let's try Hornsby and Beach Avenue. Hornsby and Beach, anything available for rent that's too bad? Oh, maybe. Hmm. I'm going to close out of this because there's no rental listings available. But this one, I think it has to be this specific building though, and not that one. This is where it gets a little bit tricky without actually calling. I mean, the easiest way I could do it is just call, call the listing agent or Google uh, what air what condo buildings allow for short-term rentals in downtown Vancouver. Um, I'm going to, I'll keep this open for now. I'll keep this one open. So where was it? This one, I'm going to open that new link. So these two are paired. Now let's move on to this one. A little bit higher up between beach and Pacific. Beach and Pacific. So like around here, this building, I think exactly. And there's nothing available for rent there. Okay, close out of that. And this one's not popping up. All right, let's see if I can make sense of anything else. Let's open up this one, this one, this one, this one. I don't know why that one didn't open. Oh, why did I click back? What the heck? Go forward again. So this one is... Nelson 
in Helmkin. Let's try over there. It was closer to that first one that I looked at. So that street and Nelson around here. Anything available for rent? Uh, this one's popping up. 40. Does that look like it matches? Yeah, I think that one matches. I think that one matches. All right. This one, I, I feel more comfortable than the other one for sure to say that uh, this one would be available for short-term rental inside this condo building because they've been a, they've been operating for the last 323 days. Okay, that's a good, that's a good sign. Let's see if, uh, oh God, why aren't these not opening up? Which one is that one again? Deluxe two bedroom condo with the heart. So, okay, let's try to open up these ones. Yeah, this is the one that sent me back. All right, if I don't find anything that matches here, I'll move on. But uh, I just want to see if there's any more opportunity. See how it takes time. It just takes time. You just have to put in the work, have some patience, take the time to do it and uh, go through things one by one that's all so the first one that i'm looking at is close to bc place that's kind of on the other side of oh no that was the area i was looking at before i'm going to close out of that this one it's a penthouse so got to keep that in consideration Also in that first area that I was looking at, so pass on that. And I think this is the same situation. Okay, so pass on that. All right, so I have two options to kind of go down. I'm gonna close out of, re actually I'll leave Realtor up for now. I'm gonna start with this one because this one seems like it'd be um, the most accurate in terms of being able to short-term rental um, inside this building. So I'm gonna open this up and let's see here. Two bed, two bath, corner unit, air conditioning, underground parking, pool and sauna access. Okay. It's been on Realtor for 49 days. That tells me that uh, they may have some motivation if they're not open to this type of business model uh, now that they might be open to it because they're pretty much just bleeding money on this place right now if it's vacant. So this is from Orca Realty. I mean, it seems nice. It's a little outdated just because of the color of the cabinets and stuff. There's no like real view to speak of. Maybe it's because it's centrally located. These photos look really dark to me. Um, they have a pool, okay. It seems like an all right place. So air DNA shows that over the last 323 days, they pulled in about $138,000 in revenue at a 90% occupancy, which is kind of insane, to be honest. Um, but let's open up the Airbnb listing and let's see. Let me close that. So it seems like today is March 6th. Pretty healthy calendar for the rest of March. They only have like one week not available or one week still available. They take one night bookings. April, they got to fill up. May, June, and July, they have some spotty bookings. Hmm. Their occupancy seems really high. Maybe they capitalized on one night bookings and that's how they're get, able to get that type of occupancy. Let's see. Okay. Registration number, definitely need a permit. All right. These photos look pretty good too. What I'm looking for here is one to see if it like if it's a full-time listing and to see how the calendar operates. 
uh, to kind of cross check to see if this kind of makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at their revenue over the last five years. So I do five years just to see when they started. They started September, 2022 looks like, and then October, November, December, January, February, March, we can see here that a lot of people like to travel to this area starting May, June, July, August, September, October. Okay. That's pretty much how it's going to operate. Let's, I can kind of cross reference that with the other one as well and see the revenue over the last five years. So they started in February, 2022, a little sooner than the other comparable and yep. They hit, wow, they hit $21,000 in July of 2022. Let's see, 2023, 25,000. That's uh, pretty crazy. It is a penthouse though, with three decks on the seawall with water views. That's probably a big reason why they're operating better. Like they actually have water views and they're closer to this area, the seawall. Um, but we can see what we could pull from it for inspiration. But let's go with this one. So this one, I'm going to go through the, what am I going through? I'm just going through the, um, right data cheat sheet first. So let me open that back up. So it meets all these metrics because I filtered off for them already. Um, it's the exact bedroom count that we're, I'm looking for on realtor. And I just double checked to the revenue and I'm double checking the occupancy right now. Going to check for consistent reviews and checking the calendar, which I just kind of checked. And this is the most important is for this specific situation is that we're looking for a comparable that is similar or identical, um, because of the condo rules that might be applied for short term rentals. So I'm just going to take a look at the calendar I already looked at. Let's see the reviews to see if they're a full-time host. So we want to see, I want to see on average one review per, per month. So two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're getting like two reviews. It looks like every month. Let's see how far back it goes. December, November. I'm just kind of going through this really, really quickly. And I, I think because they also have one night stays that they're getting a lot of guests coming through. So they're getting more opportunities for reviews, which kind of makes sense. August. Yep. Yeah. This person is definitely a full-time host. Definitely a full-time host. The calendar looks organic. Oh, actually, you know what? I kind of want to take a look at the bad reviews. I love the tea. Broken bathroom seats. Oh, oh no. Shower drain was slow. Smelling mossy. That's gross. I hate like smelly bathrooms like that. Especially if you're paying a lot of money to stay at a place. Dog next door kept barking. I mean, can't really control that one. We had five people. Three towels. Dang. Come on, host. Who's this host? Come on, Dino. Okay, that's kind of like, okay, I see that, the temperature thing. Parking spot is tiny. That's out of the, their control. No slippers. Huh, that's an interesting one. Getting into building was not easy. That could be on the host. Uh, loud because it's downtown. Okay, you are you know where you're going to book. So obviously downtown areas are going to be loud. No coffee. Okay, that could be on the host. Location was good. Place is cute. Was not comfortable. My parents were unhappy. All right, then. There are a couple of things that the host could get better on, like the broken bathroom seats, slow shower drain, dog next door can't do much about, except talk to property management or concierge or something or knock. Um, definitely more towels. No slippers. That's kind of a weird thing. And no coffee. Yeah, a couple of things that uh, Dino could get better on. Same thing, coffee maker, no coffee. Bath towels was an issue. Slow to respond. Still good stay because of location. So location is important. 
extremely noisy mini sirens. I mean, you're downtown. That kind of sucks. The rest of them seem great. All right. So we're good there. I'm going to take a look to see areas of improvement that uh, I can improve on. Actually, you know what? I am going to pull up my spreadsheet down here and I'm going to put this stuff in. And I also want to take a look to see if there's other comparables as well, because I just don't want to work off of one. Okay, let's see if I can find any other listings that are close. Close to this listing, geographically. So let's see here. So that's where that listing is. Um, here's one. I don't like that I can't just right click and open it up. It's kind of uh inconvenience. So let's open this up. This one is a one bed. It's kind of harder to uh, do a comparable with a one bed. So I'm just going to go back. So two bed. And you might be thinking, oh, hey, it's a one bed. If I have a two bed, I could just double everything. That's not really how it works. So I'm not going to go down that path. That's why it's better to have apples to apples comparison, uh, especially when it comes to the bed count. I don't want to stray too, too far away. But at the same time, I do want to actually, I can go here. Uh, where was this again? Around here between Helmekin. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in here and see if I can find anything else that is a two bed. There, Helmikin and Berard. So I think it's this listing that I'm looking at. Yep. So let's see if there's anything else available. This one might be a good one. Okay, well, this one's closer, so let's start with this. What's going on here? So this is a two bed, two bath. They've been available for 214 days. I could use this one. This one will definitely bring the average down, but it could give me a better look to see why this one's not performing as well as the other one. Well, one thing off the bat is because they haven't been available for the entire 365 and this revenue potential is going to significantly spike, uh, come the summertime because they have to get to 365 days, which is another 150 days. We divide 150 by 30 because it's 30 days in a month, which is five more months. We're in March right now. So from now until August, which is pretty much the entire peak season of this area, they're going to significantly increase the revenue. Um, they're going to blow this revenue potential number out of the water, I believe, just based on what, uh, what, the, what this listing is doing. Like the revenue in the summer months is so high. Yeah, it's going to blow, blow this revenue potential number out of the water. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to see what else is available. It's just so much data for air DNA to process. It just lags. So I could also take a look at this one as well. Let's see. Let's see how many days available. 295. Okay, so this is closer. Um, it also does have some VRBO data in here as well. This might be more realistic. I think this number here is pretty high. I'm going to find out why, but it is really high. 
I think this might be more realistic. So this actually could be a good comparable. I am, I just opened up here another tab, but I want to take a look at possibly two more that's not in that area, but close to it. Let's see. Come on. So I pulled up, so this is the main listing that uh, I have pulled up. Here are the other two. I do want to see what this one is doing. Cause that is quite high. They've been available for pretty much the entire year and their annual revenue is pretty high. I could tell right off the gate that these are not professional photos. And they've been in operation since February last year. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I'm going to copy and paste this one as well. And let's take a look. Let's take a look for a final one. Your alternative to a five star. Oh, how come this one didn't pop up? That's weird. That is the same area. I wonder why that one didn't pop up before. Because that's a really good listing. As a comparable. I mean, they've been available for 366, 2 2. In that same building, it seems like. And it is a different listing. Last five years, yeah, they've been, <laughs> this listing has been on and off between March 2019 when they f first started, maybe even started more um, longer than that. But, you know, there's a big chunk missing here, probably due to COVID. And then from here, yeah, they've been pretty much like a full-time host. So I would definitely use this. I don't know why it didn't pop up. Yeah, they've been around for a long time. They have 307 reviews. I am going to use this as a comp. All right. So it seems like we have our five comps for what are we looking for here? Let me close that out for this subject property. I'm going to start plugging in the numbers from here and I'm going to keep this one on the back burner for now, uh, just in case these ones don't pan out. At least there's another building that seems like it does allow short-term rentals and there is one that's for rent in that same building it seems like so i'm just going to pull this off to the side and just leave it as a backup for now but now i'm going to pull up the spreadsheet on the bottom side of the screen here and i'm going to plug in all the numbers and see what it spits out And before I do that though, I do want to take a look at the city of Vancouver's short-term rental regulations. So all I did was just type in Vancouver short-term rental regulation to Google, and this is their website. And I just want to understand what the regulations are. So all short-term rental operators in Vancouver must have a business license and include their license number in all online listings and advertising. Great. You must have strata approval, which is the condo board and or landlord must permit the use of short-term rentals in your home before you apply for a license. Okay, good to know. We can understand why, uh, but let's figure out what is allowed. So entire home or room within that home that is rented for less than 30 consecutive days at a time, only be operated from your principal residence. The home where you live has an owner or tenant and used for bills, identification, taxes, and insurance. Be a laneway or secondary suite only if the operator lives there and it is the primary principal residence. Not permitted if the operator lives in the primary dwelling unit on the property. Oh, interesting. So they won't allow you to do it if you have a laneway or secondary suite in the back if you live in the primary house, but only if you live in the laneway or secondary house. Huh. Be licensed 
only to the person who resides in the property. They're really trying to crack down on stuff and be managed and marketed by a property management company with a valid property management business license. Okay. So that's what is allowed. Just curious why short term rentals are allowed in Vancouver. Housing affordability crisis. We want residents to stay, live, and build a furniture in Vancouver as part of their housing Vancouver strategy. Protect existing long term rental housing and return more long term rental housing to the market. Allow residents to use their principal residence to earn additional income to offset their housing costs. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it is going to be difficult to get a license because it has to be your primary residence. So it has to show that you live there, which kind of blows my mind why they do that. Because, for example, if you quote unquote live there um, and you want to rent out the entire house, I mean, you can rent out a room. I think that's what they're trying to get at. But if you rent out the entire house, but you live there as your primary residence, how does that work? If you're renting out the entire house, where are you going to live? I don't know. Maybe someone can explain that to me. It's it's a rule that hasn't really made sense to me unless you're just living in a part of the house and then short-term renting like a bedroom in that house or something. Just a confusing rule because they do that here in Ontario too. There are workarounds on it. Um, I'm not going to share them here publicly, but there are workarounds on it. But if you could work with the homeowner and you can manage it for them, that could work, um, possibly. But anyways, let's say this is your primary residence and you are in Vancouver and you got through that hurdle and you can get a license and all that stuff. You're not maxed out on how many days you can use this as a short-term rental, which is good. Um, but I want to take a look now. We're going to dive kind of deeper into if the numbers make sense. So I'm just going to make myself a little smaller here. I have my custom calculator brought up <clears throat> and then I also have all the information that I've been looking for. Now I'm just going to plug everything in. So the market is downtown Vancouver. I believe total available listings for this market. Let me pull it up. Oh, I'd have to go back, but it was like uh, 3000 or something. It had enough listing. I'm just going to copy all the listing information or the listing link, I should say from your DNA. And then this is the one that we were working off of. Okay. Location. Let's see here. Yeah, this is downtown Vancouver. It's in this area. So I'm going to say downtown Vancouver. Uh, you know what? I can actually pull some information from, not here, from the actual rental listing. In this zip code. Actually, I don't know if that's the same zip code. I'm just going to put downtown Vancouver. And I want to cro copy this across. All right. Now, the goal of this is to find the correct data. This is what this area is for. And what that correct data, once again, is looking for full-time hosts and meeting all these requirements. So I'm just going to punch this in just to make sure that we're not missing anything. So for the first listing, it's an apartment. Days available, 366. Star rating, I wonder if I can, yeah, oh, I can make this, I cannot make that smaller. I can make this bigger and I could drop that a bit. Okay. Just so I can see everything in one shot. Star rating 4.9. That's fantastic. Especially across 307 reviews listed on both Airbnb and VRBO. Bed and bath count, two bed two bath, number of guests, six annual revenue and not revenue potential is 152, 100 
Annual occupancy is 97%. Additional notes, really high revenue uh, compared to others. So just want to keep that as a note because that could skew some things. Um, anything else numbers wise, because we're going to actually dive into the listing itself in a minute, but numbers wise, occupancy is high as well. I'm going to put that here. Really high, really high revenue and occupancy compared to others might be red flag. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Then next one. So type is apartments. Days available, 362. Star rating, 4.9. Number of views, 49. Listed on Airbnb only. We can see that right here. So Airbnb, two bed, two bath, just like the other ones. Six guests, annual revenue, 132,600. Occupancy, 79%. High revenue, that is what I would make as a note. Next one. So type apartments as well. Days available, 214. Going to make a note of that. Star rating is 4.8, number of views 33, where it's listed, Airbnb only. Two bed, two bath. Four, that's also a note. See how the other ones can sleep six, this one can sleep four. That might be the reason on top of not being available for the entire year's worth of data, another reason why they might be performing under the competitors. So annual revenue, 74,800. Annual occupancy, 89. That seems kind of high too. The This is a very time consuming process, but this is an important process because it hones the skill of being able to look into a market and actually look at the true data to make a decision on whether or not to invest in this area. So it's important to go through this. There's no shortcuts here. Put in the time, develop the skill, and uh, get better at this, essentially. So additional notes is only 214 for days available, which will skew the revenue negatively and then also sleeps four and not six okay next one also an apartment 295 4.9 56 reviews listed on both right here Both two bed, two bath, number of guests, nope. four as well. Okay. Annual revenue, eighty-seven thousand one hundred. Annual occupancy, eighty-two percent. Um, missing two months worth of high season data. I would say. And also, sleeps. Four and not six. Definitely sleeping more people seems to help. And that goes to what I said before. More beds, more heads equals more money. <clears throat> All right. Unit type, apartments. Got a typo there. Days available, 323. That's good. 4.9 stars, 135 reviews, listed on Airbnb only. This is a two bed, two bath with six guests that they can sleep. 138,900 at a 90% occupancy. Um, I 
I would say possibly high revenue. High revenue. Compared to comps. Possibly. It seems like the occupancy is actually stays pretty high across five listings. Uh, it seems like there's an average. This one is obviously an outlier because it's so high. How can you have 100% occupancy all year round? That's really, really tough unless you're in Hawaii. <clears throat> and we're not. We're in Vancouver and it snows. So, But it does seem that sleeping more guests does translate to more money. I'm just looking for patterns here. This is the pattern that I'm seeing. If I was going at this and just not filtering out for... Uh, two bed, two bath, maybe I would have got some houses and maybe it would have told me that, hey, houses do better in this segment, right? In a two bed, two bath uh, layout, houses do better. And that's what it shows me. But it's showing me that apartments uh, are the way to go. Um, and it shows me that people are operating with a high standard, it seems like, because across this many listings, especially 307 listings to have 4.9 stars is really, really difficult. So kudos to this host. Um, being on VRBO as well as Airbnb doesn't seem like it makes that much of a difference. Maybe a, maybe an extra, actually it might be, who knows? I'm going to dive deeper into that. Might be. Uh, but definitely sleeping more guests uh, does change things. Even though these ones have not been available that long, uh, I, could, I could say that that's a pattern that I can see here. Okay, now I'm going to go into the optimization goal. So with this, we're just seeing if we can match on what they're doing um, in terms of design, decor, location, layout, amenities, and uh, seeing how they're operating with SEO on Airbnb's platform um, and seeing if we can either match or improve there as well. So I'm going to dive into it one by one. Now, once again, this is my custom calculator, so this is not available to the general public. But AirDNA, Realtor, and all these other tools that I'm using is. So consistent reviews, let's take a look at the first one. Actually, I'm gonna close out of this for now, and I'm gonna close out of this because we don't need any more. The first one, I am gonna open up their Airbnb link. I'm gonna open up all the Airbnb links right now. Oh, look at that. Ah, so I tried to open up this Airbnb link and it doesn't open up. The reason why is because this host pulled this listing for whatever reason. So I am actually going to delete it. And it's a good thing that we went through this. So I'm going to delete all that because I can't use that data. I mean, technically I could use that data because that information is, is still there. I'm going to keep it. It's just, I'm going to make a note. Listing no longer active. Let's see. They have, they started February, 2023 and then they stopped. So a year, maybe they didn't want to renew the lease. Maybe they sold the place. I don't know but it's not uh, not available anymore. But the data is still available, which I want to use. It just sucks because I can't see how it operates. Um, I can't see the reviews anymore. I can't see photos and I can't see any of that. Well, I can still kind of see the photos, but I can't see descriptions and stuff like that. I could tell that they were not that best of an operator um, because these photos are not professional. The decor seems okay. But I mean, if they were pulling those numbers, that's still pretty good. All right, let's open up this one. Please open up. Yep, still available. Let's open up this one. This one's gone too. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Listing no longer available. Let's 
see all photos. Yep, looks like professional photos. Looks good. They definitely designed this to be a short-term rental for sure. Yep. It looks great. I wonder why they uh, got rid of the listing, but I can still use the data. And let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> Sweet, we can take a look at this one. All right. So for these two listings, this one and this one, I won't be able to pull any information from, but in terms of the actual listing itself, so I'm just gonna make uh, a note here, oops. No longer active. No longer active. All right, let's see. Let's start with the first one. First, we are going to take a look at consistent reviews. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to start this way because as I make notes, it's going to drop down the cell. So I'm going to start with the last one first. Consistent reviews. I looked at this one earlier. Yes, there's like a review or two at least every single month. So yes, that's all I'm looking for. Organic booking calendar, I looked at it before, but let me take a look again. It does look organic, like there's no big block off periods or anything like that. I'm gonna say yes. Listing title, is it captivating? Yeah. Heart of downtown. <clears throat> I wouldn't say Deluxe two bedroom condo. Heart of downtown is good because you want to talk about closeness to amenities and attractions um, and listing amenities. So maybe there's a pool, um, maybe it's close to a stadium or something. I would not use these characters for that, for writing this in because it shows anyways, like it's a two bedroom. Uh, say heart of, heart of downtown, uh, five minutes to stadium, pool, something like that. So, okay title could be improved. Next, photos, are they professional? Are they in order? Do they have captions and a good number of photos, which is one to three photos per area. So I'm gonna open this up, no captions. It would be down here. These definitely do look for like professional photos though, which is good. The walkthrough looks pretty good. There's a, too many photos, I think, uh, of like, I don't need to see 16 different angles of this island. I really don't. And it could be overwhelming. So we wanna make this more seamless. Okay, bedroom, second bedroom, bathroom. Yeah, seems pretty good. I'm gonna put this up over here. So professional photos, yes. In order, could be improved. Or actually, you know what? I think it's uh, Airbnb's new AI photo gallery or something. But anyways, could be improved. No captions and too many photos great super host status let's go take a look yes dynamic calendar pricing static or dynamic oh, you know what I can't do it there I can do it there but it's just because I have two screens it's uh, makes it weird so let's take a look Let's see how much he charges for the weekend, 350 a night. Weekday, 311 a night. Let's see, weekday, 311. Let's see if he charges more for further outdates. 600 a night, whoo, that's crazy. 600 a night, weekdays, also 600. Hmm. Also 600. 600, 600, 600, what the heck? What's going on here? I think this person just has that 600 a night, like the entire year. Yep, 
so calendar pricing static or I would say static. Six hundred a night drops prices with low lead time. And what I mean by that is because these nights are coming up soon, this host is dropping the prices. So you try to accommodate for that and try to get these uh, filled up. But the rest of the calendar is just 600 a night. Description. Does it sell a story? Let's see. No, not really. Could be better. Could be much, much better. No. Oops. No, could it be much better? Where you'll sleep section, this is right here. And yep, that's what I wanna see. I wanna see that this section is actually filled out. If it's not filled out, it won't even pop up. And that the photos that are already up here literally just get attached. Like it's just clicking a button uh, or checking a box. So yes and yes. And now we're gonna check what this place offers. Amenities, how many amenities checked off? 50 plus is a good listing. There's 62. So yes, 62, that's great. And are there any additional amenities? Swimming pool, hot tub, outdoor sauna, waterfront views, etc. So let's take a look. There is free parking on premises, skyline view, shared sauna. Let's see what else. I'm gonna write that down. Skyline view. Dedicated workspace could be one. This is great. This person click checking off all the boxes that they can on Airbnb. And that's what I find. There's a handful of hosts, I would say 50 to 60% of hosts that they don't do it. They literally just don't take the time to check everything off. Whether or not you have it or don't have it, you should check yes or no. Free parking on premises. That's good. There's also paid parking. That's interesting. Uh, free parking, shared gym, shared sauna. I don't know if these would be big pulls. They might be, but it's good to make a note of them. Maybe it will be in the description. Hmm, doesn't say. Any additional notes? Um, not really. It's it's pretty in tune with what I would expect a professional host to have. I'm just gonna go through the other two listings as well. And uh, I'm gonna fill this out. If there's anything abnormal, I will check back in here, but uh, I'm just gonna go offline and fill out the rest of this. Okay, now that I'm done going through everything, on this listing here, which is this one, one thing that I noticed is they have their entire calendar blocked off for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. And so I just made a note of that. Uh, they also have, I wanna make a note here, the photos do look professional, but they're not short-term rental photos. What I mean by that is like, it doesn't really sell the experience of staying there. They just looks like it's a rental, like just a regular rental um, photos. That's it. Yeah, like it's not really, it doesn't really do anything to show, oh, hey, you know, you would enjoy your time here. It's just like, this is kind of place just to sleep. That's what it's telling me at least. Um, and just through going like through the reviews and stuff, it doesn't seem like this person is a professional host. There are some glaringly bad issues that they kind of just skimp over. So they could do a lot better. Um, they are not a super host as well. But anyways, that, that was my takeaway from that listing. And here's the other listing. So this is the best performing listing that we have here, which is this one here with the really high revenue and occupancy compared to others, which might be a red flag. And going through it, it actually doesn't seem like it's a red flag. It just seems like this 
guy is just a really good operator, which means if I was in this market and uh, doing rental arbitrage or purchase a home or purchase a condo here, I would use this person's listing to get inspiration for pricing, for um, marketing strategies, and for uh, description. So I would definitely uh, keep this in mind. Sorry, I forgot to turn my light on there. Um, yeah, this this guy is operating super, super well. And even with the numbers that he's pulling in and the listing that he has, there are still areas to improve, even with the insane numbers that he's pulling in, which is like $152,000 in annual revenue. There are still areas that he could improve, which is great to see because that means if we could find or if I could find a listing that either matches him um, layout wise and location wise, then I could match his performance, if not do a little bit better. And what I mean by better is the listing title is captivating your alternative to a five star hotel. Yes, it is actually very captivating, um, but I still think it could be improved just a little bit more. Are the photos professional? Funny enough, they're actually not going through this. I could see that, you know, some of these are cell phone pictures. Like that's a professional photo, but that's 100% a cell phone picture. <laughs> and even the captions like kitchen and dining, sure, simple, straight to the point, could add a little bit more to it, but that's great. So even with the way this listing is set up, you know, there could be some, um, like it could be a, a complete professional re-photo shoot of everything that could increase uh, the conversion rate significantly, I think. And uh, he's not checked off all the amenities. He only has 32 amenities. A good listing usually has 50 of them checked off. Maybe he's just, he's been operating for so long, he didn't know that there were updates. And he could also tag those bedroom photos to this area as well. So, but he's still crushing it, which is a great sign to see. Now I'm going to punch in all the numbers into the projection side of everything. Um, but from the three listings that I could actually use the data from shows me that actually I'm going to use the data from all uh, five listings, but for the optimization side to see how they're currently operating, it shows me that there is opportunity um, to come in here, be a professional host and make the type of money that, uh, that I'm seeing here. So now I'm just gonna type in all this information here. I'm gonna go with comp one, which is this guy here, the top performer. And I'm just gonna go over the last 12 months. And it seems like I could go over the last two years and kind of average down a little bit because these numbers are kind of high, to be honest. Um, but I'm not gonna do that because I have five points of data that I could average things down or up with. So I'm not gonna go through the averaging. You can if you, like I would if I see the numbers and they're like a little bit too unrealistic, I would do that afterwards. But for now, I'm just gonna do the last 12 months. So all I'm gonna do is just one by one. So March last year, the, he did 8,700, oops. April, he did 9,100. May, they did 13,900. 14,300. July, wow, 24,000. That's crazy. 23,000. That's also pretty insane. 14,900. 11,100. 6,800. 10, 2, then January, 68, February, 8,000. As I'm punching in these numbers, what I could see, I could see a pattern here. Obviously, we could see that January to March is a, a little bit slower. April starts picking up a bit. May definitely picks up. Then we start going to high season, June, July, August, July and August are the biggest months, so we definitely want to optimize there in this market. September still a pretty good month. October still a great month. Then November um, slows down, and then December picks back up. I'm guessing because of Christmas time. So I could gauge when the slow and the shoulder and the peak seasons are, which I'll be inputting here once we get into occupancy. Now let's take a look into occupancy. 
So I'm going to go and air DNA into that. Wow, this guy, this person's occupancy is insane. 96.8. April is 96.7. May is 100. June is 100. July is 100. I'm going to guess August is 100. September is 100. And October is also 100. 76.7 in November, December 96.8, then January 93.5, and February is 100. I want to take a moment here and just say, see how from May till October, 100% occupancy, I want to show how seasonality plays such a huge, huge factor into the numbers. Even though we're at 100% occupancy, people don't travel as much and expect to, um, sorry, people don't expect to pay as much in the slower seasons. So at 100% occupancy in May, it's still 13,900, but 100% occupancy in August is 23,000. This is the demand of the season. That's what I wanna bring up. So even though we're People say, oh yeah, I'm 100% occupied all year round. That's great, but at what number? And these, this is the true data that we wanna look for. Now I'm gonna do this for the rest of them. So I'm gonna pause it here, go offline, fill this out, and then come back. Okay, now I have everything punched in here from all five of those listings, even though two of them are still not active, but I still use the data from them. And so here's all the information for the revenue, and here's all the information for their occupancy. On the side here, I just made a note that uh, when is slow season? November and January, it seems like. November drops off a bit, so does January. When is shoulder season? So you're pretty much, shoulder season means like you're covering the bills and making a little bit of profit, but you're not losing money and you're not too stressed out about it. Too stressed out about it. Um, it seems like February, March, April, and October. Even though the occupancy rate seems really high, the numbers that are coming in for the months don't really match the uh, numbers that are coming in through May to September, which is the peak season. And the occupancy rate is a little bit higher, but not that much significantly higher um, in terms, I guess, of October. But these two months, are they are significantly higher um, to consider it as peak season. So February, March, April, October seems to be the shoulder season. And peak season is from May until September. This is where the bulk of the money is made um, in this area in Vancouver. And so the next part is the historical ADR, which is how much they charge historically. And this is based off of how much they were charging and um, how much their occupancy was. And so this is how much on average they were charging throughout the entire month on average. Next is how much the cleaning costs are. The reason why this is here is because the numbers that we see on AirDNA, which is this historical revenue number, or even if we go back to, if we go back to the actual submarket area where we see the annual revenue to apply our 2X rule, that also includes the cleaning revenue as well. So what you charge or what I would charge to a guest for cleaning, that is included in this revenue number. So we have to deduct it. Uh, I'm not gonna let that load. I'm actually gonna maximize this. So, we have to figure out how much approximately this uh, host is charging for cleanings. And this is just based off of what the occupancy rate is here and the amount of the average length of stay from a guest, which is on average across the world is about three nights. Um, there's a way to look for it in air DNA. Actually, you know what? I could uh, show you. I can show you where to look for it if this would ever load. So this is where we look for it. Once again, this annual revenue number also includes the cleaning. So that's why it's important to deduct it. And where to look for how, on average, how many nights a guest stays. We can see right here, length of stay is four days. So I use three, that's okay. Now going back to the spreadsheet. Now I could, uh, actually before I maximize it, I also wanna show you also I want to show rather 
uh, where to find this cleaning fee. How to find this cleaning fee is just opening up the listing and just creating like a fake stay essentially. And we can see here for this listing is $160. I can only do two listings because the other two listings are inactive. One of them, the host has their calendar blocked off for whatever reason, so I can't make a fake stay. And then the next one is uh, for a one night, it's $100, but for multiple nights, it's 150 Oh, it's 150 So that's what I put here. Now I can maximize this. Great. Actually, I won't be able to maximize it because I have to get the rent uh, information. So we can see on average, that's how much they are actually paying out of pocket as a host for their cleans. And now we can take a look at the monthly projected expenses. So this is how much our rent, insurance, internet, and everything would be. Going back to this rental listing, it's going to be about $4,500 a month. Now, I would try to negotiate this a bit because it's not as nice as the other properties. Like it's not as modern. Um, all right, so now I'm just going to input all this information here uh, for the rent. Sorry, I don't know. I just said that. But yeah, um, this one is not as nice as the other ones. So I would try to negotiate some rent down because <clears throat> $4,500 a month also seems kind of expensive in general. I don't know. Maybe it's the going rate for this area. But let's punch this in. So it's $4,500 for rent per month. Insurance, you just need uh, tenant insurance. Um, I would guess this would be like 50 bucks a month. Internet, I'm going to guess on the high end, $100 a month. Electric, I would say on the high end, $100 a month. Gas, I'm not sure if you have to pay this separate. It might be included in the rent, which would actually be their condo fees. So I put zero. Water, I don't know how they do it out in BC, but in Ontario, it's included inside the condo fees normally. I'm going to put a little bit just in case. I'll put on, I'll, I'll put 100 bucks. Um, trash, uh, that's included. Camera subscription. I don't know if you can actually put a, like a, a doorbell camera there. So I'm going to put zero. Um, noise monitor subscription, 15 bucks. Property management software subscription, 15 bucks. Landscape and pool, zero. Additional, zero. All right. So this also calculates the Airbnb host fee, which is 3% of revenue um, on average. So take this, the monthly averages, take this number, divide this by 12, and then times it by 3%. That's how much on average um, I'd be paying for the host fee for Airbnb. Next is we could see what the monthly projected profit would be after calculating all this information. This my calculator automatically calculates this. So we can see January, we'd actually be losing like 240 bucks. February, make about 700. March, make about 400. April, make about 800. May, 3,800. June, 5,400. July, almost 11,000. August, almost 10,000. September, 5,000. October, 2,700. November, about 200 bucks. And then December is $2,500. So on an annual basis, it might make a lot of money, but per month, um, it, it's different, you know, because that's just how season, seasonality affects uh, short-term rental listings. But this is why I always tell people that this is a seasonal business and to look at it as an annual business instead of month by month. Because if I, if you start in December or, or sorry, if you start in January and you start losing money your first month, you're going to hate this business. But if you start in July and you make $11,000, then obviously you're going to have a different perspective of it. So just look at it on an annualized basis is what I tell everyone. Next is the startup costs. So security deposit, there's no security deposit in Canada. Um, so that's zero, but you do pay first and last month's rent. So that's 4,500 and 4,500 furniture. So this is a two bed. Um, it doesn't have to be like super, super high end but uh, a little bit nicer than Ikea would be great. This is in US dollars, so $9,000. Actually, I'm gonna do the conversion. 9,000 times 1.4, it's about 12,600. That includes furniture, installation, and all that good stuff. 
So I'll put 12,600 just on the high end. Appliances, like think fridge, like bigger stuff, uh, because some areas, I don't know, for some reason appliances are not included and you have to bring your own, but this is included, so zero. Outdoor space, I believe there was a balcony. Let's double check here. Yeah, there's a balcony, so a couple chairs and stuff. I don't know, like 500 bucks for that stuff. And I always like to add in a little bit here just for in case. All right, so it will be about $22,600 to get this place set up. Furnished, pay first and last month's rent, and get going. Now, this is where it all comes down to. I'm going to maximize this, and I'm going to make myself bigger. Because I want to stress to the point, wow, my hair is crazy in the back still. So all the information that I just went through, looking for a subject property that's comparable to other properties on air DNA and uh, also seeing here, I'm going to pull this up also seeing what they are or what historically they have performed at. I don't know why this is so, uh, Oh, that got a lot better. It focused so much better just now. Anyways. Um, so based on the information on air DNA and, uh, based on the filters that I have and also based on the filters that I have for, numbers and for optimizations on how we can match or outperform then actually looking at all the historical data that we just punch in and then my calculator calculator automatically calculates the rest of the stuff anything that's not in yellow is automatically calculated anything in yellow is the stuff that i showed how to actually find and input and then it all comes down to this all comes down to this magic right here so this spits out a grade at the beginning, I said that the grades go from a no thank you to a single base hit to a double base hit to a triple base hit to a home run baseball analogies. Stick with me. So a single base hit is anywhere between one to $2,000 a month. A double base hit is two to 3000. A triple base hit is three to 4,000 and a home run is 4,000 plus. Now, depending on your goals or my goals or whoever's looking at this, depending on the goals that you want to achieve. For example, if you want an extra $2,000 a month to help pay some bills or to put away for a, uh, you know, retirement fund or rain day fund or towards the purchase of a house or something like that, then that's your goal. If you want to be a 4,000, that's your goal. If you want to be a 10,000, that's your goal. But looking at this as objectively as possible, I think I got to refocus this again. As objectively as possible, we could. I could safely say, I would say conservatively say that I could project to make about $3,578 per month on an annual basis. Once again, January, we're going to be losing money. February, March, April, we'll make a little bit of money, but where the bulk of the money throughout the years made is May, June, July, and August are the monster months. September, October, still great months. November, break even. December, you know, start picking up again because of Christmas, I guess. But on an annualized basis, if we take that number and spread it out across 12 months, we can make about $3,500 a month. Now, how does that break down? Well, year one, in your pocket for paying business taxes and stuff, take home about 20000 And that's after paying back the $22,600 investment of getting this place started. Year two, take home 42000 right? The payback period of getting this 22,000 back would be in about six months. And it's also imperative to note that depending on when you start, like if you start in November and then start just kind of not doing well for like the next five, six months, that's, it's going to take longer, obviously for the money to get paid back. So this is called a ramp up period. We want to make sure that we're hitting the right ramp up period to go into peak season. So then we could recoup the investment quicker and then deploy that either into paying back stuff or reinvesting into another Airbnb or something else, right? So the ramp up period, I usually suggest about two to three months before peak season starts. We can see here peak season starts around May. So two to three months prior, one, two, three. So either February or March is when to get the lease signed or get the property purchased and then start furnishing the place and then reaping all the rewards that high season has to offer or peak season has to offer, 
All right. So you get your initial investment of 22,000 back with inside six months, if you time it properly. And then your cash and cash return is about 190%, which is absolutely insane. So based on my numbers, this is a triple base hit, like based on the ranges that I have here, this is a triple base hit make between three to $4,000 a month. Now I ask you what would three or $4,000 a month do for you? Now there are lots of things to consider one Vancouver short-term rental regulations state that it has to be your primary residence. So that's a hurdle to overcome. Two is finding a landlord that would actually say yes. Um, that's another obstacle to overcome, but this entire exercise is to show that with the right tools and with the right know-how we can find the right market and the right property inside that market to make money. And that's the whole point because instead of just saying, Oh, Hey, I have a, you know, I have a three bedroom condo in downtown Vancouver. Um, could I be making money on Airbnb? I don't know. Maybe did your neighbor tell you that they are, or did your friend tell you that they are? I don't know, maybe, but this objectively shows that, you know, it is possible. And this is, this gives us more information to base our decision off of. Right. And that's what this is for to give us more information. So then we can say, Hey, you know what? I feel more confident in making this decision based on actual historical numbers. Um, I think this is an absolute killer of a deal. If you have a primary residence in Vancouver, and if you have a condo building that allows short-term rentals, um, I would definitely short-term rent in Vancouver in this particular area of Vancouver. Um, if I had a two bed, two bath for sure, for sure. I mean, for if you're purchasing a place, this, is, this number is different, but if you can get a place to rent and your total investment is $22,600 and you're spitting out, you know, $3,600 a month annualized, that's a win. Like that's a win. A couple stack up a couple of these. Like if you have like three or four of these, you're pretty much set. You're, you're making, you know, almost 150 to 200 grand a year here in that range. And, uh, that can do a lot for a lot of people I know. So yeah, this is, uh, this has been great. Hopefully I'm going to look at the camera now. Hopefully you got some value out of this. Uh, I'm sure you did because I poured in a lot into this and uh, I'm going to keep sharing these. And, uh, I just, this entire exercise is to show what's possible and to kind of open up the frame of opportunity inside, uh, inside your head and kind of look in different avenues on how to increase your financial life, right? Because it's hard nowadays, you know, there's inflation, rising interest costs. Um, you know, a loaf of bread is like $6 now. Um, I know here, like a big Mac combo at McDonald's is like 13 bucks. So things are getting more expensive and we have to pat ourselves somehow or else, uh, we can't really get ahead. Right. Anyways. Um, if you like this, like comment, subscribe, and, uh, I'll keep posting these. Um, uh, my goal for, you know, today is March 6th, 2024. I'm going to keep doing this until the end of the year, every single day. So come rock with me.